Nice launch check on countdown net. Pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Falcon 9 is in startup. So from here, Falcon 9 has autonomous control of the rest of the count. The LD will give their final go for launch. LD is go for launch. Now the payloads continue to look healthy. Next major milestone coming up at T minus two seconds when we ignite those Merlin 1D engines and then lift off at T zero. We're about 30 seconds away. T minus 30 seconds. Range and weather continue to look good. Let's watch. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Full power. Lift off of a reef one way. Vehicles touching down range. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. Successful liftoff of Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex 4 East at the Vandenberg Space Force Base. We're carrying the Iridium OneWeb satellites into orbit. We've begun gimbaling the engines on the first stage. Gimbaling is really just Tilting the engine. Oh, telemetry nominal. We've begun what's called a gravity turn. So we're help letting gravity help pull the rocket to go sideways. We need to be going fast horizontally to get into orbit. And we actually just got through the throttle bucket. Vehicle supersonic. Throttle bucket being where we've throttled down the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for max Q. That's the point of highest stresses on the vehicle. Max Q. Fantastic views from this ground tracking cam. Nice to be out of the Vandenberg fog. Now, a rocket needs to go about 17,500 miles an hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. And if it does get to that velocity, that's what we say, what we, or that's what we mean when we say we're getting to orbit. So we're continuing MVAC to chill. accelerate on the first stage. Call out there of MVAC chill. And that's for the next several events we've got coming up. The first of those is main engine cutoff, where we'll shut down these nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. That'll be followed by stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from each other. The Merlin vacuum on the second stage will ignite at SES-1. And then we will have the fairing halves separate shortly after that around the T plus three minute mark. So again, those events back to back, Miko, stage sep, SES one, and then shortly after, fairing separation. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And there are great views of that shortened MVAC nozzle. Right hand side of your screen is the second stage. Left hand side of your screen is the first stage. We've begun deploying the hypersonic grid fins on the first stage. Those are those structures that are popping into view right now. Next major milestone will be a fairing deployment. 
And if you keep a close eye out, you might even see those fairings behind the second stage as they trail away. Fairing separation confirmed. And there is successful separation of the fairings. Now both the fairing halves, in fact, there's a view of one of the fairing halves on the right-hand side of your screen, making its way back to Earth. Both of these fairing halves are flight proven, one of them having flown three times and the other one for its sixth time. And we will be attempting to recover both halves once they make it back to Earth using our recovery vessel named Go Beyond. T plus four minutes. If you're joining us, welcome. If you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9, right hand side of your screen is the second stage in the first of two planned Merlin vacuum engine burns. This burn will last about another four minutes on the second stage. It's carrying our 21 payload satellites into orbit. On the left hand side of your screen, we've got Falcon 9's first stage. Those periodic white bursts that you're seeing are actually from our attitude control system. We're reorienting the first stage to get the engines pointing down back towards the atmosphere. Because we're coming up on Falcon 9 first stage's next major milestone as well. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Call it there indicating that we are on the path we intend to be on. Now the first stage is pointing its engines down in preparation for the entry burn. Entry burn is where we relight three of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. We relight the center engine and then two of the radial engines. And that maneuver is to slow down the first stage. We've picked up quite a bit of velocity in lofting the second stage and getting it started on its path to orbit. And we're going to bleed off a lot of that energy as we come back through the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Rather than taking all of that heat loading and structural loading directly on the vehicle, we use some of our propellant to slow down a bit. And that's what the purpose of the entry burn is. Helps us reduce the stresses and, and loads on the vehicle to help recover it. View from the inner stage. Just a few minutes ago, we had a second stage in there. Now, all the soot that you see actually comes uh, from a couple of different sources. The soot that we're seeing in the inner stage came a little bit from that second stage burn. The soot that you see on the rocket actually comes from the entry burn primarily. We're flying quickly backward through our Merlin exhaust plumes and we use a carbon-based fuel. So as we combust that, that leaves a nice small layer of soot on the vehicle. And re reusability is really what makes the cost of spaceflight lower and enables more scientific research and infrastructure development in low Earth orbit like we're doing today. Stage one, FTS was saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. There is startup of the entry burn. This should be a pretty short burn. Falcon 9 making its entry burn for its 11th time, this particular booster having flown 11 missions. Total burn duration, just about 20 seconds on the first stage. Stage one entry burn shut down. And then followed by a little bit of attitude gas there just to get us pointed in the entry, re-entry attitude that we want to be in. Now, from there on, the first stage actually has those four Both grid fins. Trajectories. And as we get into the thicker atmosphere, we get more control off of those grid fins. They'll actually do most of the pointing. We don't need to use attitude gas or the engines to do that until the landing burn starts in just about 40 seconds. Now, the landing burn will coincide with second engine cutoff on the stage one transonic. second stage. 
Second engine cutoff expected around T plus eight minutes, 45-ish seconds. Stage two, FTS has saved. Stage two, terminal guidance. Now, during the landing burn, we light just a single center Merlin engine, followed shortly after by landing leg deploy, and then hopefully a soft touchdown on the drone ship. Stage one, landing burn. Pretty fun coming in through the clouds here off the California coast. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Impact shut down. Stage one, landing is confirmed. Okay, a lot of things happen there, but I see a successful landing. Nominal orbit insertion. Of our Falcon 9 first stage. We had a second engine cutoff there. You heard the call out for nominal orbital insertion. So we're in our first parking orbit for the second stage. And on the first stage, that marked the 193rd recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Heavy. Now, of course, the mission isn't over yet. We've just done the first part. The second stage is embarking on its first coast phase. After this coast phase, we're going to relight that Merlin vacuum engine for a second time. That'll be around the T plus 55 minute mark. Expected loss of signal, Vandenberg. So we're going to leave you with uh, some views and some space tunes. And we'll see you back here in about 45 minutes for our second engine start number two.